Hey folks, and welcome back to Bridgetown Abridged. The different levels of local government can be a lot to unpack. There's a ton of them, they can be very different, and there's not a lot of people jumping in to help break it all down. In the United States, there's over 89,000 local governmental units, which is a nice, small, manageable number. Luckily, they break down into four categories, so let's give them each a quick rundown. With a few exceptions, everyone in the United States is represented by a county government. If you think of local government kind of like a house, the county is like the property that the house sits on. It has clear geographical boundaries, those boundaries always touch up against other properties, and regardless of where in that property someone lives, they're still responsible for the entire property. Now some states are too cool to call them counties, so in Alaska they're called boroughs, and in Louisiana they're called parishes. So cool. And some states are too cool to have their counties do anything beyond being used for census data, like in New England, where Connecticut, Rhode Island, and parts of Massachusetts have eliminated their county governments altogether, mostly in favor of the township model that I'm going to be discussing next. In Alaska, they're so cool that there's a region called the Unorganized Borough, which has no county-level government and is larger than 162 countries. Take that, every country smaller than Pakistan. Of course, there's a lot more to unpack there, but luckily they've got a lot of room. In addition to states neutering their counties, there's also some cities that have gone all Game of Thrones on their county governments, like independent cities which have broken free from their counties and have no county government, and consolidated counties where the county-level government has fused with the city government to become a single government which has the powers of both a county and a city under state law. Now, political power at the county varies by an enormous degree. Except in those few states with no county governments, essentially all counties provide at least judicial court systems and law enforcement. I'm sure we've all heard reference to county jails and county courts. Many states give their counties more powers than this, like public utilities, libraries, hospitals, public health services, parks and roads, for instance. At the other end of the extreme, from states with no or limited county governments, there are some more populated counties that can provide things like public housing, zoos, museums, and even food safety regulations. Municipalities and townships can be fairly similar, which is why I'm going to talk about them at the same time. They're also the form of local government that I would bet we are all the most familiar with, since most people live in towns or cities. There are over 35,000 municipal or township governments in the United States, so they make up between one-third and one-half of all local governments. If a county is like the property, then they're like the house on that property. They're usually more complicated, and they're usually built around where the people actually live. The main difference between municipalities and township governments is whether or not they're focused around a population center or not. Municipal governments exist to serve the needs of the people who live in a concentrated area, while townships generally exist to serve a kind of dual purpose similar to that of a county, namely a geographic area rather than a population-focused one. Townships exist in 20 states and can also be referred to just as towns, while municipal governments can refer to cities, villages, hamlets, boroughs, except in Alaska, and towns in 30 states, which I know is super confusing. The roles and responsibilities of municipalities and townships vary so much from state to state that it's pretty hard to generalize about either of them. For the most part, though, they mostly control things like zoning and local agencies such as police and fire departments, and fund themselves primarily through property taxes, which is about as specific as I can get while still being accurate. Here we come to our final, and also least defined category, special purpose districts. Our metaphor about the house breaks down a little bit here, but they're kind of like the garden or the reading nook in your living room. An area that's defined because there's a need for a special purpose, hence the name. There are two types of special purpose districts. School districts and special districts. Thanks, U.S. Census Bureau, really doing us a solid there. School districts are somewhat self-explanatory. These are districts that exist to provide primary and secondary schooling. In every state except for Virginia, they can levy taxes, and in some states, they are completely independent from the other forms of government, while in some, they are completely dependent on either county or municipal governments. When it comes to the special districts, we get to the sort of potpourri section, if you will. These governments are all over the place and can vary incredibly in size, function, and form. For example, there are cemetery districts, ambulatory districts, port authorities, library districts, and even mosquito control districts. That's right, there are formal governments in the U.S. dedicated solely to controlling mosquito populations, just as the founders would have wanted it. Some of them have elected officials, and some of them are appointed, some can levy taxes, and many can't. They're really all over the board, and they can even vary heavily in quantity by state, with Alaska having 15 and Illinois having over 3,200 of them. Overall, there are more than 39,000 of these types of districts, meaning that they make up close to half of all local governments, so it really pays to know which special districts apply to you. In review, there are four forms of local government. 
municipalities, which are small governments focused on a population center, townships, which are similar to municipalities but focus on a small region, counties, which are to completely divide up the land in each state into governed pieces, and special purpose districts that are made up of school districts and special districts focusing on serving a single purpose to a given region of people. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Bridgetown Abridged. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you'd like or share the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, you can hit that subscribe button down there or go to my channel to check out my other videos. And if there's a video you'd like to see me make in the future, throw a comment down there. I'd love to take suggestions. Thanks, and have a great day.